right, let's talk about some patterns. So for the pattern for this, oh, let's get this out of the way. I made a mess, sorry. So I took my pattern from a combination of places. The main body of it I took from the Tudor Tailor, which is where I've been getting all of my patterns. And for the sleeves, I used this pattern from McCall's. It's another one of Angela Clayton's designs. That's M7763. I had originally wanted to use this for the entirety of the design, but as I looked at it more, I, for one, it's a front closing bodice, so I would have to switch the opening around, which is not a big deal. But the other thing was that the front decoration was kind of more alteration than I wanted to deal with. So this is pretty similar to what Frau has going on. However, Frau's kind of covers more of the bust there. So I wasn't sure if this is a shaping seam or if it's just a decorative seam, but I didn't want to have to deal with changing a shaping seam if that is what it is. I decided to just take a bodice pattern that had no seaming at all and that I would just place my own seams and go from there. This is a really cute design and I really do want to make it sometime in the future, but it just wasn't quite right for this project. I would have had to make a lot of alterations to it. So I figured I would go for something that was a little bit more basic and had fewer of the embellishment details already on it so that I could then add my own. I did take the sleeves from this. However, I am thinking maybe these sleeves are going to be a little bit too big for what I want. We'll see when I actually try it on, but I think I'm going to have to decrease some of the volume. Maybe just pull this all up because I think there it just droops a little bit too much down here. So I ended up using the same pattern that I used for the kernel. If you see here, there are two different bodices that are included with this pattern. There's the kirtle slash petticoat pattern, and then there's the gown bodice pattern. So I ended up just tracing this out as I was tracing this out as well. So they have a sleeve pattern there, but I'm not sure if that is an all the way up to the shoulder sleeve or if that's just going up to the puff sleeve. So I decided not to use that. So this was where I started with pretty good base pattern took the base pattern and then I hacked it apart by deciding where all of the like decorative seaming would go. So regarding alterations, the first thing that I did was I extended it through the waist. Since Frau has her bodice extending through the waist, extends below her waist by an inch or two and comes to a point. So that was the first thing I did was that I extended it by an inch on the side seam and then by about an inch and a half on the center front. I also took the waist in a little bit so that I can get a little bit more waist definition. And then once all of the like overarching changes were made, I went into the more design like decorative changes. So that meant that I needed to split this center piece and the bust piece off from the main pattern. So that's what I did with this. Took the bust piece off first and then I took this center piece off here. So because the bust part goes all the way through to the center, I did that one first and then when this is getting sewn together, these two pieces will be stitched together first and then this can be added on really smoothly. Uh, everything else on there is not really much patterning, it's just like lace and embellishments, so I didn't worry about patterning that in. That'll just go on at the end. For the bodice side back and the bodice back, there weren't that many alterations made. I literally just extended it here and then took the waist in a little bit. This is the sleeve from Angela Clayton's pattern. It is very large. <laughs> really what I'm gonna do is shorten it a bit all around actually. And if you remember from talking about the patterns in my Alice mock-up video, I don't like it so much when there's a whole lot of space on the underarm seam. So I would love to shorten that so that it's more of a puff only on the outside part just because it's a little more flattering and it's a little more comfortable and not to have all the extra fabric under there. That already is a big alteration I'm gonna have to make. I didn't do it already in the mock-up because I've really been rushing with all the holidays happening and all of our traveling and I just didn't think about it till now. Now that I've had some time to like settle into the house again and think a little more clearly, I realized that that was a change I should have made, but I didn't do it when I made the mock-up, so we'll get to it afterwards. There is also a lower sleeve. So Frau has these big bell sleeves that were just revealed <laughs> recently on an Instagram post. So I've patterned some big bell sleeves. I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna like how this pattern turns out because you know all the volume is just gonna be on this bottom seam, but I, um, I wasn't really sure how else I wanted to do it. I guess I could do a straight seam and then just add an inset. And actually this is probably, this added volume is probably gonna turn into an inset. So this might change a lot, but if you can see here, 
she's got a little tiny triangle of white right there so that that might need to change we'll see that actually looks like it's the same pattern as here so hmm we'll have to see if i have enough fabric left over from that to do all of this other like white parts of it otherwise it's just going to be a white fabric and it'll be okay if it doesn't match a little bit i've also got my undersleeve and i believe i took this from the angela clayton pattern as well I've explained this in a previous video, but your undersleeve is really important because it gives something for a puff sleeve to anchor to. If you don't have an anchor sleeve or an undersleeve, then your puff sleeve will just, there's so much space for it to expand, it will just expand. If you've got an undersleeve, it holds all of it up like this rather than letting it fall down your arm. So that's really important. And then it'll also give somewhere for this to attach to that isn't just the bottom of the puff sleeve especially because if this is on the bottom of the puff sleeve it will absolutely drag this whole thing down if there's nothing to anchor it to for the skirt i'm using the same tudor taylor pattern for the henrichens ladies kirtle and i'm using the long optional train basically i've just expanded the kirtle pattern and i'm going to be using the entire kirtle pattern so i do want to leave the center front open but because i want the gown to have more volume in the skirt than the kirtle does i am just going to use the center front panel as well and i'm going to split that down the middle add it to this part and just treat it like it's a side front panel and just pleat everything up so that there's more fabric going into those side back and back pleats than there is on the kirtle i am hoping that works we'll see um i did mock the skirt up on this one so that that yeah uh, i regretted that with the kirtle that i didn't mock the skirt up. i also wanted to make sure that i am getting the amount of opening correct because i wasn't able to bead all the way around the kirtle it's expensive it takes a lot of time so i only beaded the front panel and i want to make sure that that beading all gets covered up there's a lot of alterations this wasn't like alice where there was a really straightforward thing and it was mostly just embellishment this one has a lot of seaming and a lot of extra stuff into it and like that's not even to get into all of these like slash and puff parts i figured i should get the structural parts down first and then this stuff will come later i probably won't do another mock-up to show that stuff these are really just decorative and they're not a functional like shaping part of this whole thing this whole costume is just kind of an experiment i'm not super familiar with this time period and it's kind of derailing so far off of what is actually historical it's fantasy gown with historical inspiration so i've already made the mock-up because sewing muslin is kind of boring and it's not pretty fabric to look at so let's go try this on okay so the shape of this looks okay-ish but it's kind of a, a mess in terms of where all this style line is so i'm gonna have to fix that quite a bit um first i want to look at the skirt though okay so you can only see the top part sorry about that but I think that how much it covers looks really good. I'm having a little bit of the same problem that I did with Alice where it's wanting to throw forward. I think I'm gonna have to put some straps in it or something. I'll probably just safety pin them in because that seemed to work just fine with Alice. And that way, I don't know if I ever wear something that's a little bit more balanced, they're not in the way. I don't know how to make these skirts properly balanced when they're so heavy in the back. I guess it looks fairly round. It's just this one right here. So maybe this hoop is just too big, generally. Uh, I don't know, I think I'll see how it looks when it's in the velvet and maybe make the hoop a little bit smaller and then go from there. So I don't know if you can tell, but the hem is a little bit lower in the front than it is on the side. So like there's a big train in the back, which is fine. That's what I wanted. The side is a little bit short. Maybe I'll just add a big seam allowance to everything so that I can balance it out when it's actually in the velvet. I, yeah, I think that's what I'll do and I'll just try it on when it's in the velvet to see how it goes once I figure this hoop situation out. Actually, once the train is on the ground, I think that it helps a lot with this bowing out. Like it doesn't seem to be swinging out as much. It is still swinging out some, so that's not great. I don't know, adding weights to the bottom might help. I'm trying to hold it down with my foot. If I add a weight to the bottom, that does seem to help actually, especially cause it's not like the cage kernel in where the steel was just too weak. So maybe I'll add some weight to the bottom there and that'll help to flatten all of this out as well. Great, I'm gonna try that first. So thanks to everybody who suggested weights in my Alice series. Uh, that will probably come in handy for this one. Um, the only thing is that I think there maybe should be more volume in the skirt. I don't know, or maybe that it just should not all be in the back because the back has a ton of volume, but the front has not much. So I think maybe I need to just distribute 
these pleats a little bit differently. Well, I think actually it does look a lot like the drawing even if I want it to have more volume just because I like volume but it does look like the drawing when it doesn't have a ton of volume like that so maybe I should just leave it how it is. The bodice looks not great. <laughs> I think where this is sitting is pretty good, uh, just generally like how long it is. I like that. I, I don't know. I think her actual thing is a bit longer, but I don't want it that much longer. Yeah, hers is definitely longer, but I don't think that I will look very good if it's like super way down here. So I think keeping it up here will be better. It definitely needs to come in at the sides. Can you help me? Yeah. You're very unlikely to stab me because I'm wearing so many layers. Okay. So just pinch a little bit out of here like that much is good okay and then pin as close as you can to, to like where i'm pinching yeah okay. so we pinned out some from the waist micah helped me out there that's good there's still a lot more problems <laughs> sleeves are way too big they're just they are too big they're also too off shoulder so this whole bodice is just not correct i think maybe if i trace the kirtle bodice instead that'll give me a little bit better like coverage here. The rest of it, now I think we have a good shape. I think this looks nice. And I think if this keeps buckling here, then I'll just add a bone down the center. Uh, it, it's fine. It's not gonna open in the center front. Normally when you do Renaissance bodices, they are visually unbroken in the front, but they do fasten in the front. So there's usually two layers to a bodice where the under layer laces up and then you have a panel that closes over top, like folds over like a page, I guess and then the back is unbroken. There's no lacing up the back. Saizo explicitly drew lacing in the back of Frau, so I am just gonna go with that and it'll make it a little bit easier on my life that I won't have to add a bunch of extra layers where all the decorative stuff is. I think that's a better choice for this because usually these Renaissance bodices also don't have as much lace and other crap going on in the front, so I think this will just be better generally. Also, while I'm doing my fittings, I'm taking notes in my bullet journal here. This is a blank page for my bodice, but I've got my Sakizo page here. So far, I have taken waist as pinned, halter bodice as drawn. Where it is now, this is far too high. My bust is like down here somewhere. Draw where the kirtle neckline is. And tuck all of that in there. So I have a good line to start with. That's much better for one. As you can see, the line that I originally had marked for the white part of where the bust is separated is just far too high. That's like non-existent now. So the bottom of my bust kind of looks like it's here. So I'm gonna just draw that like that and if they don't match that's okay we'll just take an average you know there's going to be a bunch of lace up here so i just want to draw that in a little bit so i can see if it if there's enough space for everything and then there's some lace trim here as well and then there's the big stone there and like this is not necessarily where all of these things will actually go i just want to be able to see and make sure that i've left enough space for each element and because i am not a drawing and my proportions are not like drawing size i might have to leave some stuff off just to like make it look proportional to my body because she's got a long anime torso and i don't and then there's this big lace thing that goes in here and then i think this center part is still a good size what this will also do is it'll really help me when i'm digitizing this so that i know how big to make all of the elements when i'm design it in the embroidery software because otherwise i'm just guessing without having any kind of idea and it may or may not be right that is a good approximation and i think that this is enough space for all of that detailing hopefully some little lace pieces here with stones so those also go in there so i think that really helps the bodice a lot for one lowering this really helped and then taking it in at the waist that makes the silhouette look a lot better the neckline is just we're gonna have to figure something out if i bring things up to where the kirtle is i think having the sleeve come from there instead of where it currently is which is more like where the petticoat sits so i just need to switch it to using what i took from the kirtle instead and i think that'll just lift everything up a whole bunch the sleeve is just too large and I really don't want to have to do so much detailing on here. If I do all the detailing on this size of a sleeve, it's going to take me a week just to do the sleeves. So we're going to not do that. 
I was unsure if this bottom sleeve was gonna work out, but I think it looks really good, so I'm happy with that. First off, I want the bottom of the sleeve to just not be this at all. So I have already kind of made a note to do that, but this could be pinched out. Can you pin out, like, on the fold, it'll be about two inches, so it'll be four inches total. Does that make sense? Yeah, but where? Just from the middle, anywhere. From here? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay vertically, not horizontally. So Micah just pinned these out. So that was a little bit of a struggle, but we got there eventually. So at the volume it is now, I think that's a lot better. I still think there's maybe a little bit too much volume. I think I could take some out. When I make the actual thing, I'll put a little bit of tool in there to like help keep them more buoyant. But right now they're, they're just muslin, so they want to collapse a lot. If it's a little bit bigger than the drawing, I don't really mind. I like big dramatic sleeves, so I think that'll be fine. There's a little bit of wrinkling here, but I think that once it's more on the shoulder rather than off the shoulder, that'll sort itself out because this will be longer. The Tudor bodice and like everything that goes under it is so much bulkier than the Victorian stuff. Like, I feel like Victorian clothing is just meant to like make you look really squished in and compact. Whereas the Tudor stuff just really makes such a conical shape. So I don't know, it's maybe a little bit less flattering, but it's definitely more comfortable to wear. Like this is something I feel like I could wear for like the whole day rather than Alice, which is like, please take it off me as soon as I've got it on because the corset's a little too small. I meant to do this mock-up fitting a little while ago, but because of traveling and then like not traveling. Um, so we ended up not going to Micah's parents' house because we were kind of scared of the new variant, but we're postponing that trip. So we will be going eventually, but <laughs> with the dealing with that stress and then the stress of all the traveling we are doing or did do, now we're not because, you know, <laughs> everything kind of got postponed. So I really rushed to get the kernel done and it is done, thankfully. And now the mock-up is done. So I can finally start on the actual dress. That's so exciting. Oh yeah, what do you guys think of my new backdrop? Is it too dark? Look at this kitty. He's like so mad because we woke him up for this. Both of the cats are sitting behind the camera. Well, now this one's not, but they were both sitting behind the camera watching my fitting and then I guess I bored them so they went to sleep. And Baby Bat's still there. She's looking a little groggy and yawny. Honeybee is just like a sack of flour, but he's... Oh, he's awake now. He was just looking really mad at me that I had woken up, but... Can you say hi? You choose right now to be the one time that you're not meowing constantly? Okay, goodbye. Oh my baby, she's like, no, no, I hate this. Hey, Joe. It's very hard to hold you right now. I don't have much, please don't fall backwards. Oh, oh baby, baby. bat. Why'd you do that, honey? <laughs> oh, silly girl, she's okay. She's just, they just both woke up. So they're like, please let me sleep, mom, okay super excited to start working on the actual dress. I'm gonna start hopefully cutting fabric this weekend. We'll see. But um, yeah, the, the fitting videos are usually kind of short, but uh, they're an important step. And <laughs> unlike the kirtle where I skipped the fitting for the skirt and it ended kind of poorly. I mean, it ended fine, but the interim was kind of stressful because I had to replete everything and detach it all and uh, whatever. I figured this time I should actually do the fitting for the skirt. So, you know, fittings are important even if they're not the most exciting videos. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I should show them and also if I'm doing a fitting then like if I did the fitting at the same time as I did the skirt I'd have to cram more into that video and then you guys wouldn't get to see all the things I'm doing to the skirt. So that's why I do these fitting videos as separate videos. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> So I thought about it some more and I really didn't like the way the last mock-up looked so I decided to completely scrap it and make a new pattern and a new mock-up. So that's what I did here. I think this looks a lot better. I redid the sleeves and these are just so much better. They're so much less poofy which I think is great and they're a little bit poofier on the top than the illustration but I think I like this amount of volume. So I think I'm gonna stick with this. I'm standing off center so that I can see the mirror there. Uh, maybe it should be pulled up like this. Yeah, so the waist is a little bit higher than it seems. What I'll end up having to do is add a little bit more on the bottoms here because right now where I have this going through the waist, like 
The neckline and this hem here are a little bit, both are sitting a little higher than I want. So I think I'm gonna lower this neckline and then lower this as well while keeping the structure of this basically the same. And I'm just gonna draw it right on the mock-up here. It looks better <laughs> with the seam allowance. Elongates the torso a little bit more, so that's good. So I'll just draw it out to where the seam allowance is. Drew an arrow and wrote new hem on there. <laughs> For the top here, this is all like, it looks like it's just sliding up a lot. I don't know if that makes sense. Like the whole shape, I wanted it to be a little bit flatter, but it looks like it's all just tilted up. So I think, I think I do want to just tuck it so that it's right above the kirtle. So just mark that. And then I moved the whole thing back up on my shoulder because on the last mock-up it was based more off of my petticoat pattern. And if you recall, that was falling off of my shoulders a lot. So I changed it so that it was more like the kirtle, which is staying really securely on my shoulders. So I think that looks a lot better. The back is wrinkling a lot and I can't tell if that's because it's too tight horizontally or if because it's wrong vertically. Okay, so for one, I do think that it's cutting too far back towards the shoulder blade. So like my sleeves are really far back there and I think that that might be part of what's causing so much drag. So I think if I just move the arms I seam an inch out, like where it dips in the most, that should help everything a lot. Uh, so I think maybe I need to shorten the shoulder strap a little bit so that this is all sitting a little bit higher and I think that looks a lot better. That's it for the bodice, I think. And then lastly, I wanted to look at the skirt. I took off the very front panel of the skirt on this side here. So it is covering a little bit less, but you know, I think I like the fullness of leaving all of the panels there. I know it's hard to see here, but uh, I don't know, maybe it looks fine. So this looks more like the drawing. I don't think it covers enough of the kirtle. I think I like it with the more volume better, even if that's not exactly what's in the illustration. It is an illustration after all, so it's very much up to interpretation. So I think I will keep all the volume in there. I'm wondering if the snowflakes are maybe a little bit too small, which would be unfortunate because I've stitched a lot of them out already. Hmm, I think maybe the snowflakes do need to be larger. Oh no. Okay, so I'm much happier with how this looks this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting stuff out for real. I'm kind of uh, running behind now because I did decide to do the second mock-up and fitting and also just generally from travel still, I'm still trying to play catch up with that. So I am hoping to get this all out on like a weekly basis with the skirt and the bodice and everything. <laughs> Might need to skip a week just to give myself a little bit more time. So if that's the case, I was thinking of doing a sewing room studio tour kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm just trying to get this done as quickly as possible while not sacrificing quality. So I might just need that little extra time <laughs> to get everything done and get caught up again. But I'm trying my best and I'm trying to get it all done before KatsuCon, so uh, please bear with me <laughs> if we need to take a little bit of a detour so I have a little bit more time to sew everything. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's all for today and now I need to go work on the skirt and do some other stuff and I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, if you liked the previous iteration better, I don't know, let me know, even though I'll be a little bit sad about it, but that's okay, I'm happier with this one, so it, it doesn't really matter. If you like the other one better, let me know anyways. And I just, I like to know what you guys are thinking about all of this. If you want to see what this looks like in actual velvet and lace and everything, then please hit the subscribe button, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.